there's a piece of software that I wrote. I call it Brax Wi-Fi, which you can run on your Raspberry Pi 3. And it gives you VPN and Tor routing. I'll show you how it works. If you buy a pre-configured VPN router, it's usually sold from about $299 to $499. The solution I'm going to tell you about is less than half that. It's coming right up. Now, why do you need a VPN router? Well, as I will show you, there's nothing to configure on your devices. It's universal. Just log into the VPN or actually log into the Wi-Fi and it's seamless protection without anyone having to think about it. It's stealthy too because your guests who use it or family don't necessarily know they're on a VPN. This means you or people at your house don't accidentally expose your IP address. Also, your ISP is prevented from tracking you, which they do. They want to sell your data too, like Facebook. This solution uses an inexpensive Raspberry Pi 3B or B+. At my house, I run two of these. It's cheap enough that I can put one at each side of the house. This pre-written software allows you to instantly turn your Project Pi into a useful device. The problem with some of the example code for VPN routing and Tor routing on the web is that all the instructions I have tried have flaws. For example, there are DNS leaks or WebRTC leaks. There's also no easy interface and it's difficult to use. So I wrote my own software for this and it has a user interface and very simple settings. Let me show it to you. First, I will log into the Pi remotely. You don't have to do this. You can plug in an HDMI monitor and keyboard to the Pi and control it directly. But I like the lazy way. I don't have to get up. I usually access the Pi using SSH. I plug it in somewhere else and I don't have to physically go to it. On Windows 10, you can install the Linux subsystem. On mine, I installed Ubuntu, so it is easier for me to control this from an Ubuntu command line. On a Mac, you can just use Terminal, which is built in. But there are many alternate options. You can use SSH using a Windows program called Putty. And on iOS, there's an app called Termius. And Android has other SSH programs. Again, you don't have to use SSH. This is just for my convenience. In this example, I'm going to access the Pi from a command line using SSH. First, make sure you are connected to the Wi-Fi before you run this. To this, I just type SSH Pi at 192.168.42.1. I put in the password and I'm in. On a GUI-based app like Termius, you just have to know three items to log in using SSH. Your user ID is Pi, then put in your password. And when you see the word host, that is just the IP address, which is 192.168.42.1. So let's log into it now. This brings up a status screen for me. And the important detail here is the IP address of the Pi on the network. You can access it without logging into the Wi-Fi if you know the IP address that it uses. It also tells me what mode I'm running. Let's skip this for now and press enter. Here's the main menu and everything I need to do to control this device is here. It's pre-configured to use Bytes VPN, though you can run any VPN with it with a few extra steps. Now this is the neat part about the router. I can use it as a VPN router together with my Bytes VPN subscription, or I can just use it as a Tor router, which does not need a subscription. Or I can turn it into a standard router. All easy choices just by selecting from the menu. After we finish setting it up, we'll quickly try all the modes and I can show you what happens to your IP address. First, you can configure the Wi-Fi it comes with default settings, but you can change the Wi-Fi name and password. And you can select if this will work in 2.4 GHz or 5 GHz. 
The 5 GHz is only available on the Pi 3B+, so buy a newer Pi if you can. I'm just going to use the default settings here. Next, I need to put in my VPN login credentials. In this case, I'm going to put in my Byte's VPN credentials. Now, normally, you have to pick a specific VPN profile. So here, I will pick one. I have these regions, and I also have ad blocking options. Let me select one, then save it, and that's it. Byte's VPN preloads these profiles. If you're using another VPN, you'll have to load those profiles manually. So now let's try out each mode and see what happens. First, let's start with open routing mode. This will turn a device into a regular router. Okay, I'm logged in. Now let's go to my IP check website to see what my IP address is. Here, it shows my home IP address. So this is something we want to hide from websites. Now let's try it with a VPN mode. I just select it from the menu, then it reboots. Let me log into the Wi-Fi again and we'll repeat the IP check. Here it shows the IP address of the VPN. Let's try it now in Tor routing mode. Tor routing is pretty awesome because it will change my IP address every minute or so. But Tor is a lot slower than a VPN, so I use it only when I have to. But as you can see here, the IP address will keep changing each time, randomly. So as you can see, this is a pretty simple to operate device. If you have a Byte's VPN subscription, we can preset the SD card for you so it's just plug and play and you don't have to do SSH. Go check the description to see where to order this SD card for the Pi 3B Plus or the B. You have to specify which one because the software isn't the same. I also put a link to the best price for a Raspberry Pi 3B Plus on Amazon. You can just order the whole thing as well. You can just buy the same Raspberry Pi for you and assemble it. Again, a normal VPN router for your home is pretty expensive, $299 to $499 typically. This is less than half that complete, and you're able to use it as a Tor router, a VPN router, or just a regular router with super simple software, no complicated interface. Mm -hmm.